Trailing the Hunter's Moon is presented by Ruger Rugged Reliable Firearms Hornady Accurate Deadly Dependable Trichicon Brilliant Aiming Solutions Wildlife Systems Serving hunters and landowners since 1987 DSC Conservation Education and protecting hunters' rights. What an absolutely fantastic morning here with Don. Don and I have hunted together a little bit on an absolute monster antelope. Didn't we though? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I don't know that we can, I don't know that we can equal that in terms of the, right. what, what that animal was, but man. This place is fantastic. This is the H.E. Terrier Ranch, uh, the Ponte del Monte that Wildlife Systems has had for hunting for at least 12, 14 yeah, years. 12, 14 I know years, because yeah. years ago I came here with Greg and shot mm -hmm. a Neil Guy antelope that was unbelievable, but yeah. uh, we're hunting for a scimitar horn oryx this morning, and they're kind of one of the true success stories when it comes to exotics here in Texas. Is that there are actually probably as many on this individual ranch as there are in the initial country where yeah, they came right. from. So they've done extremely well here, and we're going to have to look for either a really big bull or a very long horned cow, and really doesn't make me a whole lot of difference. But I'm excited. We drove around a little bit yesterday with the oh, landowner. Yeah. With, uh, yeah. and, uh, the population's good. Uh, we yeah. saw several yeah. yesterday and yeah. a bunch of other animals too. And yeah. I can't wait to see what we're going to see today. Yep. We've got a 375 Ruger. It's supposedly shooting where it's supposed to. <laughs> and, oh, it, it will. It's, it's top of the Trigicon scope. Yeah. And uh, then uh, I'm shooting the uh, Outfitter 250 grain GMX. Wow. Hornady load, yeah. which the, that rifle shoots extremely well. Yeah. So if we get onto one, I'll try to do my part. Mm -hmm. I know the gun and the bullet will do their part. Yeah, it's just whether I can. Yeah, <laughs> it'll go where I've got it. It'll go where the barrel's pointed whenever I pull the yeah. trigger, Don. So. Okay. And I good. think you're going to be usually carry a backup yeah, yeah, gun I'll, too. I'll, so I that's got perfect. 300 win. Perfect. Well, let's, let's go see if we can hopefully not get stuck with a little rain that we had last night. Tell me. Yeah. One of the things about wildlife management is, is when you manage the habitat for big species such as they're doing here with white-tailed deer, turkeys, the exotic species they have, the habitat benefits. If there wasn't any economic value here for some of these other animals like the game species and the exotics, all this would be a totally different type of habitat. And because you have that grazer and you have that browser and the one that grazes and browsers, you have to have a diversified habitat when you do that everything benefits, including the habitat itself. This segment of DSC's Trailing the Hunter's Moon is brought to you by Double Nickel Taxidermy. It is warm. <laughs> it is hot. 
Uh, but it's that time of year. We're starting to get heat down here. We came down probably right before the last little bastion of cool air was here and is going to be here with this kind of front that's moving down. But after that, daytime temperature is going to be 100 plus and humidity is going to be 100 plus. And mosquitoes are going to be 1,000 plus down here. So it's a great time to be down here, but any time's a good time. If you want to come down in the summertime and experience what South Texas is like, deep South Texas is like in July and August, by all means, come on down. You'll hunt late in the afternoon, early in the morning, and during the middle part of the day, you'll do like a lot of locals do, and just kind of sit in where it's cool and take a siesta and get ready for the rest of the day. Oh, what I was going to say, Don, that's one of the problems I've got now with people that don't understand what I'm trying to do. When I, when an animal like a sable is so regal, dies of old age here, mm -hmm. they say, well, why didn't you do something? I said, I don't know what you wanted me to do. It had a life here for eight or ten years. Yeah, really. And uh, I can't walk behind them and, and keep them from dying. And they're like the white tail and everything else. Good gosh, how many of them are in that herd? I don't know, Larry, that's a lot of them. That's a lots of, lots of bodies right there. Yes. We've got a herd spotted. Kind of got the wind in our direction. Kind of blowing this way. See if we can get back here in this brush and see if Mr. Don can do his magic. This in the background. We're going to move it, we'll figure it out. Oh yeah, one goes back, one comes forward. He sticks straight up in Yeah. There. God, there's no way there's one or two of them there worth shooting, but... Yeah. <sighs> but it's a Good Let God. Let them get off the road. If they will. Maybe they'll ease off to the left or right. There is a bunch of them there. Oh my goodness. They're still coming. Look at that. <laughs> They're not. It's about time you think that's got to be it. There's a little bitty one right there. <laughs> hmm. Beautiful okay. animals. Gosh, yeah. that's pretty. A lot of them. They're white and against this beautiful lush green that we have right now, they look even whiter. Yeah, they do, don't they? Whiter whites and brighter brights or whatever that was years ago. This segment of Trailing the Hunter's Moon is provided by Ripcord Rescue Travel Protection. We got your back. Hi, I'm Greg Simons with Wildlife Systems. Native to North Africa, scimitar horned oryx are what many would refer to as an XC2 conservation success story. XC2 meaning off-site. In their homeland areas, scimitar horned oryx were extirpated in most of those regions many years ago, and restoration programs have struggled to reestablish those populations. Conversely, here in Texas, we have over 10,000 scimitars found on various private game ranches. And it's these free enterprise markets that allow those landowners to financially benefit from the surplus that are sold to either live animal markets or through fee-based hunting programs. And those incentives encourage those landowners to be a steward for that resource and to provide a home for those animals into the future to ensure their sustainability.
We've got an orange we just drove past over here. Looks like it may just be one. So we're gonna try to put a stock on him and see what he looks like. Follow Don. One eighty. I can't tell. He don't look much. No, he doesn't look like he, unless he really sweeps back. Yeah. But I don't think he's gonna do that. Bang. Oh, longer than I thought he would, yeah. but he's still. I think we can do better. I do too. I know some of those that we've seen in the herd yeah. are every bit as good or better than he is. See what he does. He is pretty though, isn't he? See what happens. He's kind of relaxed a little bit. You can tell when he started licking himself. He's right up here still, I'm looking right around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. There he goes, he's gonna go. Lucky day, sir. Your lucky day. He's not quite what we want now. No, I don't think so either. He, he's got good length, yeah. but he's heavy at the base and he just kind of he plays out a little bit. And then that one kind of dips Dri that down one droops over, over, yeah. On one side. Yeah. Well, he sure is pretty, though. Yeah, he was. He done the job on it. <laughs> well, This segment of Trailing the Hunter's Moon is provided by the Texas Trophy Hunters Association, the voice of Texas hunting. Kinetrek, boots for the trail less traveled. MB Ranch King blinds, built in pursuit of perfection. Double nickel taxidermy. And by Ripcord, rescue travel protection. We got your back. Just spotted a bull. Looks like a pretty good bull. He's limping a little bit. So he is in this thick stuff somewhere. We're gonna try to get in there and kind of skirt the edges and kind of look for him and hopefully it won't start raining too hard before we get in there. Yeah. 
through here. If he's crippled, he might be on this road. Yeah, yeah. He don't know we're here. We don't know we're okay. Don, what do you think? Yeah, it's a good one. He's coming at to us, give it to him. I'm gonna have to wait for Chase to tell me something. You good, shoot him? If you want it. Okay. I don't think he's gonna go very far. No, he's hit. He's, no, he's hit. Should yeah, be hit right he's on the dropping, shoulder. Yeah, yeah. He should be right on the yeah. shoulder. Okay, good great. job. Okay. All right. Hang on, push this back down. Get it back to where I shoulder absolutely fantastic horns one side's a little bit longer than the other he'd bring that off probably in a fight I think that's why he was by himself he probably got kicked off by another bull got after him and chased him out of the herd all I was waiting to hear is Don say he's a he's a good one I've dealt with these animals a little bit in the past and uh, but it's been a long time since I've dealt with any of them, but that is absolutely gorgeous bull. Love the color. These things were originally called the white orcs of the Sahara, which is where they're from. If you look, their, their feet are not real big, but they're kind of flat. So they have a tendency to be able to walk on the sand. I don't know if that's a broken, I think that may be a broken rib. Or, I guess he has been a fighter. There's a couple of broken ribs right there. Got poke there. There's <laughs> carnage right there. So he's been a fighter, but he lost out on this last one. He's got a abscessed teeth right there as well too. His old teeth are worn way down. I can feel his flat teeth right there. He was tough. It's not quite as tough as that 250 GMX. Beautiful animal, beautiful animal. Actually more of these here on this ranch and they're kind of alluded to earlier than there are in their homeland. The only thing that's different is that the ranchers down here in Texas have sent some animals over there to try to repopulate some of those areas with the, these particular several subspecies with these in the attics and a couple of other animals. And the unfortunate thing is their poaching is so rampant 
that I don't think any of them really survived. But uh, I know the, like the Exotic Wildlife Association and through their members will probably be trying to do some more and reintroductions. One of the many reasons why we have exotics in Texas, they do well here and they can serve as broodstock to send back to their native countries whenever they're exportated out of those areas. <laughs>